David, on the last show, I said, do you know what this is? I know what this and you, is. And you gave the wrong answer. I did? Yeah. I'll, so I'll give you the script. This is what Ham is Radio it? Now, the most important amateur radio oh, yeah, program I, on the I, internet. I, yeah, I blew that part. Okay, David, do you know what this is? I know what this is. What is it? <laughs> this is Ham Radio Now, the most important show on the internet. Ham Radio Show on the internet. Yeah, close enough. Let's see if I Take can make this, this thing. Yeah, it's a little... It's a little recalcitrant, but uh, you can tell them what the show is. Here it is. Whoosh. Okay. This is Ham Radio Now, episode number 378, Bouvet 2018. That, that's it. And, uh, and, and now I'm remembering that before we do anything else, we do this. Yep. If, uh, if you like what we're doing and you want to help support us and keep us going forward, please visit hamradionow.tv and look for Arvin and click the pig. And if you don't like what we're doing, just send us nasty email. Everybody else does. Yeah, I don't get so much of the nasty emails. So start sending yeah, it my way. Well, yeah, <laughs> we'll kind of hook you up with a uh, <clears throat> ham radio now web address uh, email. So email address. That's yeah, all I need. One more email address. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> but so. no, but it will be good. I can. I yeah. I can't wait for those. I will enjoy those. All right. I'm going to send you on you send back and push a button, and we'll bring in our guest. All right. So uh, we'd like to welcome uh, Hal Turley. Hal is W8HC, and he's the social media, what do we say, the most social media guru for the, uh, the expedition to Bouvet. Yeah. Hi, welcome, and thanks for joining us, Hal. Oh, well, good, good evening, David, and good evening, Gary. A pleasure to be here with you guys this evening. You guys are like, got one foot on the boat, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just uh, after- we'll, we'll be there. Yeah, we will be there. When, uh, when do you leave? Um, I fly out of Charleston on the 9th, which is what, six days? Six uh, days from now. Six, six days. And, uh, and then we'll go uh, through Atlanta. Several of us will hook up in Atlanta and then fly down to Santiago. And then we have flights out of Santiago down to Punta Arenas, um, Chile. And uh, we'll be there, I think, three days. We've got some training uh, uh, that we have to go through before they'll let us on the boat. I'm not sure whether they show us how to bail water or what, you know, what they're going <laughs> to teach us. But, but I understand that uh, we do have to undergo some training, which is a good thing, yeah, about a day and a half's worth. And... Uh, and then uh, from that point, we'll prepare to uh, to board the Batanzos, uh, is the uh, name of the vessel. And I, I understand it's their, uh, it's the maiden voyage since it's been refurbished. I think I'm right on that. But uh, they've done quite a bit of work on the Batanzos. Uh, the uh, the uh, travel agent uh, or the company that we're um, working through. And uh, it's been in dry dock. They've completely refurbished it. And I understand we're probably going to be the first group on board to uh, sail through the sub-Antarctic. Yeah, there were some nice pictures on the uh, on the website that I was looking at before. Yeah. Is that the boat? I think it's the other boat. I, I think that's, that was it. I was trying to Is make that, that, that picture big, and it wasn't getting big for me. Oh, uh, there, there was a better picture of it in dry dock. Um. Yes, I believe that's it. That's, that's the it. Anzos. Yes, that is. Uh huh. And uh, the uh, it has the DAP, the uh, Delta Alpha Papa, painted on the side of it. And uh, I'd have to to go through my notes to look and see what that actually stands for. But it's a they're a very large company in Chile that uh, I think Bob and and George have have worked with before, and Ralph. And, uh, and so, uh, they have been in contact with them and they're making all the arrangements through DAP and a couple of the gentlemen there that, uh, like I say, they've worked with before and, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're going to be traveling with them. Uh, they have a fleet of, uh, of, of, uh, aircraft and, uh, now I guess they're getting into the, um, uh, into the, the, uh, sailing business to, to take groups down to Antarctica and uh, we'll see how it works out. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I can't believe it's almost here. Mm-hmm. So you, 
So you leave in six days, and and how long does it take you to get down to to Chile, to uh, to get to the point where you get to to the training? <clears throat> um, it'll t- it'll take a day. Uh, Just do. Yeah, yeah, we we'll have a slight layover. We'll have a layover in Atlanta and then a layover in Santiago. And we arrive there the next afternoon on the tenth, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh and then uh, we have a, a, a uh flight. Our flight goes out uh later that afternoon, I believe, to Punta Arenas. Uh we booked flights with a, a Chilean uh commercial aircraft or airline. And, um, you know, so we should be arriving in Punta Arenas, uh, I guess, late evening on the, uh, on the 10th. Mm-hmm. And that's where we'll be, I guess, for three days. Yeah, so yeah, we'll, you all get, go ahead, Gary. I, I was a little behind the eight ball. I was going to bring things up on Google Earth, and it took me a while to get, to get back <laughs> there. And we can see uh, where this sure. is in terms of the rest of the world. So there's, there's the island. It's mostly glacier, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Is there any it's a dry volcanic. Land? Um, just just around the edges, uh, you know, around the the, the coast. But uh, it's uh, for the most part, I'd say uh, at least ninety five percent covered in snow and ice. Okay, so everybody, keep those of you watching video. That that's the little dot. It's about to disappear. And uh, that's so there's is. the southern tip of um, South America, yep. the southern tip of Africa. And uh, Antarctica, and it's it's back right in here someplace. So it is a long way from any place. So yeah, you, it's, suppo- it's, it's supposed to be the furthest from any place. The, <laughs> they call it the most remote place on Earth. It's like middle of nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and I was um, <clears throat> I was kidding folks on uh, on uh, YouTube saying that um, you're going there to uh, to warm up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, w- where I'm at right now, outside of Charleston, West Virginia, uh, this morning I woke up to zero degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, and so it's uh, significantly colder here than uh, than down there. Uh, right now, I think it's probably about fourteen or fifteen Fahrenheit. Yeah, I'm looking so at AccuWeather. It's um, you know it, the highs for the next few days anyway will be in, in the upper 20s to low 30s. Uh, yeah, they said we could expect the t- 20s to 40s Fahrenheit range, and uh, and uh, so the you know as far as cold and you know bear in mind it's it's their summer down there in the southern hemisphere, so um, you know you would expect that to to play some role, but. Uh, you know the main thing is the the winds and the uh, and the precipitation, uh, and if you look there, you'll see uh, some of the days. I know that I had looked at on their uh, weather forecast were calling for extremely high winds. Uh, of course, the precipitation can expect snow and uh, at least at night, and uh, <laughs> and so it's just going to be a wet, cold, windy, just. But it's going to be warmer than where I'm at right now. At least so. for now, yeah. <laughs> warmer than so where I am. So to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even David's got a, a jacket on there. Yeah, I got a little sweater on here. Yeah. You're in Los Angeles. I'm in North sure. Carolina. And uh, Hal, I think you're in uh, West Virginia. Yes, correct. Yeah, I'm right outside of Charleston. I wave at you every time I drive to Dayton. Up yeah. I-77. Yeah, well, you have to, you know, maybe uh, plan a stop here. Of course, I'm in Dayton every year and have been. Since the mid '80s, I guess. So. Yep. So I don't know yeah. how AccuWeather does this. You know, a, a month-long forecast. You know, more than two or three days. Kind of ridiculous, but it gives you an idea that yeah. the, the highs will float around freezing. Yeah. So that's all it's like. It, it, I mean, and it is summertime down there. <clears throat> as summer as it gets. Yeah. yeah. Down down well, there. That's in the, pretty. That that's part pretty of the world. far south. It's hard to tell on that on that angle, you know, like where, how the how far down it is. But when you when you when you went when you actually had um, Uve up, there's the little Earth on the far right bottom. It showed you how far far down it was. Yeah, I think I've lost uh, lost track of it. Yeah, you got to search it and. Come on. So you guys spent a couple of days training, but they didn't really tell you so much about how, how what kind of training. 
um, you're going to do. And then, yeah, see so if you look there on the bottom on the right, Gary, oh. you see how far down it is. It's okay. really far down there. I'll leave, I'll leave the uh, little, little the pip, pin, pip yeah. on there, and now we can see. Yeah, yeah. So you guys do a couple, couple days training, and then you guys <clears> get on the boat and head uh, eastward. How, uh, um, how long do they tell you that, uh, that that trip will take? Well, I don't know if it's been determined yet where we will actually sail from. Uh, there's, we, we will either sail from Punta Arenas, uh -huh. in which case my understanding is that it'll be uh, 12 days perhaps uh, sailing east, as you indicated, to the island. Uh, the other option, and this is the preferred option, is the the Batanzos will go ahead and sail on down to King George Island in the uh, South Shetland group, and they will fly us to uh, South uh, Shetland Island or uh, King George Island, um, and we will board there, and that would be on the uh, the thirteenth, I believe. So we we don't, and in which case, if if we did sail from King George Island. Uh, it would be about a 10-day journey, assuming, you know, we have good seas and so forth. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I don't know if it's been established, uh, um, you know, where our point of departure will actually be. Most of us who, who are going down to this uh, Antarctic and sub-Antarctic area for the first time are hoping that we'll depart from from King George to... Uh, because we'll have an opportunity to uh, to see a little bit of the the wildlife, you know, that's native to to that part of the world. Otherwise, we won't probably won't see anything when we're on Bouvet. Um, you know, we won't be on the coast, we won't be uh, camped on the coast, and we won't be exposed to the to the birds. My understanding is where we'll be up on top on the on the plateau where we'll have our camp. Uh, there's nothing, you know, no living organisms per se, <laughs> no, no wildlife, no plants. Uh, and so it, it's a, it's a desolate, uh, a desolate environment, certainly on top. So yeah, hoping that, that we'll depart from, from King George and, uh, and, uh, spend a part of a day there. And we'll also have an opportunity, I understand to, to visit, uh, one of the other local hams uh, down there at one of the bases, um, uh, R1ANO, uh, who's quite active, and uh, you know, they've stopped and, and uh, had opportunities to, to visit with him. And, uh, and I, I apologize, I don't, don't recall his name. But anyway, hope, hope things work out and we can uh, you know, make our departure from uh, King George. When, when, when will you know? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> Not know. A lot of time know. left. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and it, you know, for me, it, it and the rest of us, you know, it, it doesn't matter. We will board. We'll get on when where they tell you when, to. When Bob, <laughs> yeah, when Bob <laughs> and Ralph and and Erling say, you know, this is where you be when when you be there. And you, and uh, you guys aren't all. Okay so I guess there's, there's a, we looked at the website before. It looks like there's about 20, 20 operators going. You're not all in uh, in West Virginia there. You're not all coming from the same location. No, there, no, no, no. No, come actually from all over the world. We, we've got uh, one uh, no deer, EY, EY, Mike, Mike. He's already down there. He, uh, I think he arrived today. So he's from Tajikistan. Uh, Pista is uh, from, um, from Hungary. Hotel Alpha Five Alpha Oscar. We've got another HAL, uh, JR Four OZR from uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Erling and uh, Just from Norway. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Keith from Canada. We've got. Uh, mm, I know I'm missing somebody on the you know DX wise, but I think uh, there's. I think maybe seven countries represented. Uh, Michael, Pop Alpha Five Mike, I don't want to forget him. And uh, Hawk, yeah, um, uh, SM5AQD from Sweden. 
uh, and so we've got we've got a an international contingent for sure. So um, no, I'm the only only West Virginia gal on this trip, uh, and we're you know from the states here. You know we're pretty representative. Uh, California, Atlanta, uh, Georgia area, um, uh, Iowa, Minnesota with Ralph. Um, let's see, I was uh, Glenn W zero GJ, uh, Jerry WB nine Z up in uh, in um, Illinois, and then uh, we've got Craig K nine CT of course out in Peoria, and then Arnie. Uh, N6HC is uh, from California, so I don't know if I've forgotten anybody. If I have, I apologize. But no, we just know, we just showed the list. Okay, all right. With all our pictures. How, so yeah. so so backs up a little bit here and begs the question: How yeah. did this all come together? How, how long have you been been planning this? And and who decided? Hey, it'd be really great to go out in the middle of nowhere and activate this chunk of rock. You've been working right. on this like two or three weeks at least, right? Yeah. Well, that, no, I, I certainly have not been, but, but you know, Ralph and, uh, and Bob and uh, Erling, you know, this, this was a, uh, my understanding, a, a vision that they had had, um, you know, from uh, previous expeditions that they'd been on. They, they wanted to, to uh, do another uh, sub-Antarctic expedition, and uh, they apparently had kind of set the wheels in motion on this probably five or six years or maybe even longer ago. I, I don't know uh, exactly when. And so, you know, there's a lot of effort goes in getting the permissions, uh, you know, the permits, the, the licenses, um, and a whole boatload of hoops that, that these guys had to, to jump through before somebody like me or some of the other operators are even on board. Um, I, I had received um, an email from Ralph, I guess it was uh, a year ago, August, and this was shortly after the, uh, you know, the Bouvet operation had been announced, and, you know, Ralph uh, sent me a, uh, an invitation, wanted to know if I would be interested in, in being part of this, the expedition, and so, you know, for me, that's when my planning uh, commenced, and uh and so, uh, but, but, uh, you know, the, the, the movers and shakers, uh, Bob, uh, K four UE and Ralph K zero hour and, and, uh, Erling, uh, LA six Victor Mike, they, these guys have been working on this for, for several years. Mm -hmm. And have you, have you done a, a de exposition before or did, uh, I mean, obviously they found you cause <clears throat> you were interested or you'd done something like this. What, what had you done previously to make you a candidate? Um, yeah, I've, I've done, uh, four previous, uh, de-expeditions starting in, in 2012, the, uh, the, uh, Swains Island NH8S, uh, de-expedition mm -hmm. that, uh, K9CT and, and, uh, Joe W8GX put together. I was invited to, to participate on that one. And, you know, with that one, um, you know, I was asked to, to go on a couple more, went with uh, Lou K9CT, or uh, uh, N2TU, uh, the uh, Wake Island K9W, we did that one, uh, and then um, last year, in uh, year before last now, in uh, January of 2016, uh, we did the, the K5P, the Palmyra de-expedition, and then in, in uh, 2000. Uh, 15 in November, uh, I took a slot on the VK9WA Willis Island de expedition that uh, some of the some of the guys here in the states uh, put together, and uh, and so yeah, I've, I've had four four previous expeditions, and and I've done some other you know many expeditions on my own, uh, but uh, you know n nothing in even comes close to you know, to, to this and, you know, the preparation and, you know, getting ready for, uh, for something like this. And, and of course the, the ones that I did previously were out in the Pacific where it was nice and warm. And, and, uh, you know, I've, I've mentioned some of the guys have joked that I was a, a flip flop t-shirt D expeditioner. So, you know, it's required me to, to, you know, go to great lengths to get the, the clothing and the, 
preparations for for this. Well, I mean, this I'm, is the South Atlantic, right? Is it technically Arctic Ocean or, or Antarctic Ocean? Uh, no, it's. I'm understanding it's the uh, it's the South Atlantic. Yeah. Okay. So you're going uh, yeah, to a so. you're going going to a a um, warm paradise, South yeah, Atlantic. I don't think so. I'm not buying it, Karen. <laughs> you, you you saw that snow when you zoomed in. Yeah. It almost it almost looked like that island was ice. <laughs> yeah. I will guess there's some rock underneath there somewhere, right? Well, way down below, there's a you know volcanic ice. Uh-huh. It's it's a, it's a volcano. It's a volcanic island. It's a, a glaciated. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know how deep you would have to go to to actually hit, you know, hit bedrock or hit rock, but uh, you probably wouldn't want to try it <laughs> yeah so so three y zero z who who's uh who owns that i mean what country uh assigned you that is it bovese is that, bovese not a a country on its own or an entity on its there's, own there's no it? one there yeah exactly um it it's uh it belongs to norway uh norway. it's a okay. it's a norwegian uh possession mm-hmm. and um of course it was uh you know discovered way back when when they were um, you know, searching for whales and and going down to that part of the world. So, you know, it's it's uh, after crossing oh. the, uh, the 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 um, uh, the equator, they were looking for something cool again. <laughs> <laughs> we're burning Maybe. up here. We need something cool. They're, head head south. Right. Huh? Maybe we'll assume nobody's going to fight them for this one. <laughs> Yeah, probably not. But it's uh, you know permission has to be secured through uh, the Norwegian authorities, the uh, their Polar Institute folks. I guess have uh, ultimate say on who who goes onto that island and who doesn't. Mm-hmm. You know, for for the, these entities, these DXCC entities, um, you know the the ARRL rules require that you know uh, permission has to be in hand. Yeah. For it to count. I was so. going to say, odds are nobody from Norway would catch you down there. <laughs> but, no, but, no. but if you, but you, if you want a successful de-expedition, you got to be legit. That's correct. Right. right. So when I, when I first opened up the website, because I, I took a look at the website, and um, when I first opened it up, and, and it said early 2018, and it, it made me wonder, is somebody going back? Are there plans for a mid-late or other? <laughs> 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 but I did get it's you know we're doing it early in early in this part of the year and actually Gary if you go to the top at news and updates there's a better picture of the ship and actually I think that's that actually shows the ship because the one that's yes the, it does that's okay the yeah, that's, you guys are going on yeah that's what I saw before yeah n- now you can see the uh, what the developing Antarctic projects projects yeah, that's DAP mm-hmm. that's a nice looking boat. It's a big boat. Yeah. Now, uh, a lot of them, the at least the South Pacific trips had been on a ship called the Braveheart. I know they that was a favorite. Um, yeah. But it doesn't have helicopters. Um. Well, you know they they can uh, outfit it with a, hel- a helicopter. Um, wrong, the, uh, wrong part of the world. No. Or, originally, my understanding was you know we were going to we were going to use the Braveheart. And uh, the uh, the captain uh, Nigel Jolly uh, had worked with Ralph and, and and of course Bob and and the guys on several other de expeditions and and he was going to uh, to take uh, not the not the Braveheart but another another vessel that that's in his uh, you know with his company and um, I'm not sure the the details but uh, ultimately. Nigel steered uh, our guys towards DAP, and uh, they had had this Batanzos, this vessel that they had acquired, and with the the helicopter situation and uh, and so forth, this was a larger vessel and would be more suitable. So so I guess Bob and company they negotiated with DAP, and and uh, I believe Nigel may have been involved in some of that as well but but we will be and i've i've never had an opportunity to to be on an expedition with nigel jolly i was really looking forward to it uh because uh yeah, all the stories and so forth uh but uh anyway i'm sure everybody will miss nigel on this that have 
that has uh, been on expeditions with him. But uh, we'll be with with DAP. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what? We'll, so, so we talked yep. about the helicopter. So yeah. What's, what is the helicopter situation? So just one that lives on the boat? Is there more than one? No, there will be two. Really? Uh, yeah. This this is another one of the advantages. Uh, you know. He, we would be uh, with with our um, camp plans and our our station plans. Um, this is going to be unique because it'll be the first time that uh, uh, a D expedition has operated from on top. And uh, you know, if you look if you look at the the photo images from down there, um, you know it's um, a pretty good little cliff or hill um mm -hmm. to to get up there and so you know naturally the 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 helicopter situation uh, is the way to go and uh it was decided that we would best be served for safety reasons uh as much as uh, you know logistics to have a a second helicopter mm -hmm. so we'll have we'll have two helicopters and i might two pilots and uh, we'll have the the mechanic uh folks there you know the the good thing having two helicopters if if one breaks down you've got spare parts <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> right and away and away off the rock a, yeah that's right uh is, is there the possibility of a landing on the island or is it is there no real beach uh, there is a beach on the uh, on the northwest corner, um, and if you you look at the the maps or uh, zoom in on the on the north uh, west corner, uh, there's a a rocky um, has been used in the past. That is also the the location of the uh, shelter there. There's a, there's a scientific station uh, uh, shelter weather station there and it is subject to uh you know very very harsh um weather weather conditions you know the high surfs what have you my understanding is that that they lost the station a few years ago and had to rebuild it or, or bring in another one and basically it looks like a um uh i'd like one of the sheds or shelters that you'd see at a at a cell tower you know that houses the the, the electron cell tower so if, yeah if you if you go on to the left there um right in that corner there and is yeah that, and that's your maybe doc. <laughs> around around the bend there that that whole corner there you know there is beach area there but it's uh, it's not a place where you would really want to to come in in a zodiac or a you know craft. Um, you know conditions would just have to be perfect. Yeah. So. And then and then Hel getting helicopters. The, I'm getting sorry. to the top of getting to the top of the of the of the island there would probably be difficult or impossible with all the equipment that you had. Oh no doubt. Yeah. How many uh, how many trips do you expect it's going to take to get? all 20 of you and all the equipment that you need to bring uh, via helicopter to the island so you guys get set up? I have absolutely no I idea. Yeah. It, it is, it is a, a concern uh, with, uh, you know, with uh, making sure that we have everything that, that we need to have on there to provide the, the best uh, possibility for, for working the world. Uh, you have to keep in mind we have uh, probably in excess of twenty thousand pounds of of gear, uh, supplies, all of our equipment, our shelters, uh, cots, everything. And we we loaded a, a forty foot sea container and it was loaded to the gills. You can see uh, you know images on the web uh, website of the sea container. Um, of course, uh, our main uh, uh, corporate sponsor, DX Engineering, all of the aluminum, uh, heavy-duty mat, power sections, uh, 
the anchors. We're going to be utilizing a a uh, system with um, what what's referred to as a falling derrick, um, and the piping, the aluminum piping that went into this. You know, it's going to take many many loads to get all of our antenna stuff over there. And so, you know, I, I wouldn't even hazard to, to guess. I do know that, that we have any uh, loads that we can, uh, I guess, that are paid for. Uh, but um, there's some concern that, you know, we're going to exceed that, in which case uh, Bob or Ralph are going to be writing dap a, a, a check and so you know you go on on the website and, and on the facebook page you know and read about you know that this is something that that we are still looking to underwrite a little bit more uh in our our contributions and our support to make sure we don't come up short on the helicopter situation this, so. th- the total um tab for this i understand is in the like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar range yes yeah which is uh you know that's not chump change <laughs> no it's a lot of it's a lot of money do, do you yeah. know if this is the most expensive de-expedition ever launched as far as i know it is yeah and you know and and to to take that i mean that's that's the cost uh and the expenses and that doesn't include the the in kind uh, materials, uh, equipment, radios, um, you know, all all of the the stuff that has also been donated and and loan that's going into this. I mean, this um, you know realistically is well in excess of a million dollar um, operation. So it's. You know, it's it's going to meet or exceed. I think just about every every superlative that's you know been coined in terms of a de expedition, you know, cost, what have you. And so, you know, we want to make sure that three Y zero Z is in every logbook of everybody <laughs> that's that's looking for us. Well, yeah. So uh, let's so talk about so so sure. I guess in in about two and a half weeks or so. With your travel and waiting to get there and whatever, you're you're going to be on that island. What what what's Hal's role look like? What are you going to be doing? Um. Well, first and foremost, you know, we'll we'll be securing our our camp, and sure. uh, you know that that will take uh, you know all hands on deck, or all uh, to to get everything set up. We're probably looking at a couple days with that. Uh, Glenn Johnson W zero GJ was was tasked with the responsibility of putting together a schedule mm-hmm. and, and, you know, Glenn meticulously looked at, at propagation. He looked at, at, uh, all the factors, uh, that go into where do we need to have the, the most operators on at any given time to, to reach all the, the, you know, the places that, that have the propagation. So, you know, Glenn has put together a two and a half or three week, I think a three week schedule for all of us, uh, where we'll be operating, uh, uh, four and six hour, uh, shifts. So if we're not operating six hours, uh, four or six hour shifts, you know, we'll be sleeping, eating, um, uh, for four or six hours, uh, there's an expectation um, because we there are certain times of day where there will be more openings um, than we'll have a, a scheduled operators. Uh, you know, we're going to be expected to step up and put in overtime, <laughs> and uh, and so you know, I, I I anticipate doing some of that. Um, um, I'm looking forward to uh, maybe a couple nice days weather-wise while we're there, uh, and uh, do some some video work. Uh, I'm taking a uh, Mavic Pro uh, DJI uh, drone quadcopter uh, that's capable of 4K uh, video, and uh, you know, so I'll I'll, I'll be doing some video work uh, 
ultimately for a, for a, uh, a video project that uh, will uh, result from this. So, uh, other than that, you know, uh, you go on these de expeditions, and and after you you get in the in the groove on the on the schedule, you you kind of become numb to, you know, what's what's going on around you. There, there might be some opportunities to to you know see see some things, I, but I doubt it. You know where we're going to be with uh, being on top of this glacier, um, so it's it's going to be pretty much confined to uh, the area of the camp, uh, maintaining the uh, the generators, uh, keeping them fueled up and uh, oil changed, uh, securing the the vertical antenna. Um, you know, it'd be pretty much just policing the area to make sure you know, things are clean. Uh, any trash or waste or, or anything, you know, we're, we're to leave the island uh, condition that we found it. So, you know, we'll, we'll constantly be, you know, doing things to, to maintain our camp and maintain the, the infrastructure of our, of our, uh, stations. Mm-hmm. What, um, when you do get to operate, what, uh, what's your preferred or, uh, I prefer your mode. preferred operating, but yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I prefer phone. I mean, that's uh, I, I, I enjoy uh, the 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 best. Uh, I enjoy CW. I, I, that I don't quite have the stamina. Of some of these guys uh, in the in the huge pileups, and you know, I'm quite certain that. The pileups that we're going to experience here are, are going to just uh, exceed anything that that I've ever witnessed previous uh, previous trips. And so, you know, the the CW pileups tend to wear me down a little bit, uh, but uh, you know, I'll uh, you know I, I can operate any mode and look forward to to you know just making making cues and and filling the log and running rate and having a good time it's it's quite a feeling to to know that you're you know making all these contacts and you know many of the, many of these uh dxers um you're going to be making them quite happy and you know that uh, it's a it's a very rewarding feeling uh and uh you know i, c- I can remember back <clears throat> in uh, my first well my only uh, contact with Bouvet, uh, the three Y five X guys. And this was in, uh, I think 90, uh, I believe it was in 90, 80. And, uh, uh, you know, I only have one, one contact with Bouvet and it was a 20 meter phone contact. And, you know, how happy that made me feel and I hooped and hollered and celebrated and, and, uh, you know, I hope we can, a lot of celebrations with uh, the hams around the world with uh, with our operation from three uh, y zero z. Yeah. Now, how, how many days? How many days do you guys hope to operate from the island? Because I know it'll take a couple days to set up, and it'll take a couple days to break down. Um, you guys have that schedule. You're still kind of working on that. Oh, well, you know, uh, it's there's some some flexibility there. I think ultimately. We're hoping to to at least be on the air for about sixteen days, so you know we'll uh, you know the the weather's going to be a, a, a factor, and um, and so but ultimately uh, fourteen to six, I believe is the number that's uh, that's been th- thrown out there, mm-hmm. and you know in, in fourteen to sixteen days with uh, seven or eight stations. Uh, on the air simultaneously, uh, and and more in in some some cases, um, you know, I'm hoping by the end of the second week, people are running. You know, well, I've worked them, I've done that. I've, you know, I don't need them on. So, give somebody else a chance to get in there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was looking at the um, the other D expedition, the three Y zero X, I think you said. Yeah. And uh, it, it appears that um, there's some uh, wildlife there. Yes. Seals down on, and down penguins. Down, down on the sea level, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, you got you got to get down on those rocks <laughs> uh, next to the to the sea. Yeah, there's there's wildlife there. And it looks like they they used a helicopter too. So the only way on and off the island. I see a helicopter in that picture. There was a, a D expedition um maybe two sunspot cycles ago that um their tagline was from the bottom of the world and the bottom of the sunspot cycle. And that's kind of what your situation is going to be too. Um, propagation is not going to be in your favor. Well, for sure. I mean, this is uh, not, not optimal. And this is why, you know, we are, are positioning ourselves to, to have the, the best signal that we possibly can, the best signals. And so with, with our location up on top of the, of the island uh, and a, a great takeoff angle towards uh, Europe and, uh, and the U.S., maybe a lesser extent to, to some of the other parts of the, of the world, uh, you know, we will have that. We'll have uh, uh, Yagi monobanders, uh, antennas, three element monoband for for uh, each of the HF bands. We will have phased arrays for the low bands, um, and you know we'll be running a full le legal limit. And so you know, yeah, the propagation uh, gods may not be smiling on us like they could be in the you know the peak of the solar cycle, but rest assured that we will have very workable signals. Um, and if, if you look at the, uh, the propagation, uh, page that Stu, uh, N6TU is, has uh, worked with Ralph and they have on the, on the website, you can see some really, really good openings, uh, you know, throughout the, throughout the day. Um, and you know, there's no reason why anyone anywhere in the world, uh, you know, cannot or will not be able to work us. You know, if if they put forth the effort. Um, now, you know, if you're running 100 watts to an attic dipole, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to guarantee anything. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be about the best as I could do. <laughs> okay. But you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna try to get FT8 up and running because I know I know you know a little noise to signal. Yeah. I, I saw the chart. Uh, I don't know if Gary, if that's if that's handy. The the chart of all the frequencies and bands and uh, modes that you guys were going to do that that's um there's a there's a lot you guys have a lot planned for uh for the trip and the uh the picture the drawing of all the antenna the antenna farm that's that's quite an impressive antenna farm you guys are going to carry in a in a you know sea container and then set up in the middle of nowhere and that's really the middle of nowhere yeah david talk about one thing at a time so i can get the pictures up here there's, sorry okay there's let's the start with that. Plan all right let's start <laughs> let's yeah let's talk about the band plan so so you guys you guys are gonna you guys are gonna do uh eme on uh, yes. on cw and and then all the way up and down the band on on cw as well uh lots of voice uh some rtty mm -hmm. And then the FT8, and uh, gosh, if I'm going to talk to you guys at all, it's going to all be, it's going to be there somewhere. Well, you know, I mean, there's something for everybody. Now, yeah, uh, you know, I've been asked, and and there's been, you know, some discussion about the FT8, and um, you know, because of the very nature of it, you know, it's not a real efficient mode in terms of running rates and so forth. It takes one minute for a, a mm -hmm. QSO. Um, and so, you know, we're we're not going to be. That's not going to be a primary mode for us. You know, we're right. we're going to uh, to utilize FT8 on the the closed bands. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, if uh, you know, if if we're not uh, working any stations on, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 17 meter either mode, you know, we might flip over and, and uh, you know put on FT8 and just see if uh, anything generates out of that. But you mentioned the uh, you know the the EME stuff, uh, uh, Michael PA5M and and a couple of the other guys, Craig K9CT, um, they are kind of taking the lead on the the EME, the Earth Moon Earth stuff. My understanding is that uh, there's going to be another super moon. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the super moon last night, but and there's supposed to be another super moon, some kind of amazing moon while we're there and and you know a lot of the guys are looking forward to 
opportunities to work uh, Bouvet EME on uh, six meters and two meters. So, you know, that's kind of exciting. We've gotten some really good support from um, several EME uh, aficionados around the world who've contributed and, and, um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, they're looking forward to opportunity to, to work Michael and the guys, uh, on EME, but, um, it's going to be a very aggressive schedule. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's there's going to be a lot of RF coming off of Bouvet Island once we, uh, once we get things rolling. So the, the EME is going to be, um, JT 65, I think. Uh, I think so. Yes. And I, I believe there might be another mode that they do with that as well. I'm, I'm not an EME, uh, operator. So I, yeah, it's not going to be one of those, um, side band or uh, CW. No, no, it's, uh, it's you're not it's taking a digital. Fi- you're not taking digital a 50 digital. element array down with you. Um, they have, let's see, uh, and they set this up when we were down in Atlanta in, in uh, September, uh, they did a dry run setting up the, um, uh, uh, the two meter array. It's it's uh, phased four, uh, four Yaggies. This and, this uh, might be I, it. Uh, I don't know. There's there's photos on there on the website. Um, yeah, that looks that looks like it. Yeah. Okay, so wow. that's that's actually pretty pretty significant. That might be. Yeah. capable of doing a cw contact yeah i don't i don't know uh, they they may I, it's, I can't, it's going to depend on what's on the other end yeah but the but the jt65 has opened up eme to um people with more or less minimal systems mm-hmm. well there you go yeah <laughs> that's pretty amazing <laughs> all right and gary so if you can go back and and show the uh, the antenna farm I will go try to find that for you. You can find that. Cause like, I, you know, I was looking at that, I was thinking, gosh, I could aspire to that for field day. Somebody. <laughs> so, um, where do you, where do you look most looking forward to? What am I most looking pro- Probably getting off the, off the boat. <laughs> yeah, getting, on, getting off the boat and getting on the getting boat. Off- well, you know, here's the thing, and this is this is my my worry card is I have I have never done any serious sailing, and uh, although this is a, a large boat, my understanding is you know this part of the world can offer up some some treacherous sailing conditions, uh-huh. and uh, so I'm I'm prepared. You know, I've, Ralph uh, K K zero hours sent us his uh, recommendations for. Uh, you know, seasickness and nausea and, 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 uh, but the, you know, the, the, the longest that I've been at sea has been 30, 30 some hours. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm really kind of anxious to see how I fare with, uh, all the, the medication and everything that I have, but, yeah. but I, I will be looking forward to getting off that boat. <laughs> My experience with it is exclusively from watching the videos and uh, two guys at dinner on a 15 man de expedition. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else. <laughs> it's a good diet plan, right? Yeah. 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 All right. So it looks like you got the it looks like you got the antenna farm going there. Yeah. So let's take a look. So uh so you got a whole bunch of Yaggies. This is not a picture. Well, I mean it's a picture no, of the no, background. It's a draw it's a drawing. Right. Yeah, it's th- a I think no deer, I believe, put post. this together. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll notice you'll notice the hundred and sixty meter uh vertical there this is a, a special design that uh, no deer came up with and working with uh, uh, the folks at dx engineering this is going to be a 90 foot a 90 foot wow. did did you catch that 90, 90 foot feet. vertical <laughs> yeah and so that's pretty intense we have two of those or with us uh-huh and then okay. the 40 and the 80, those are verticals, and it looks like you got yes. 60 and 40 on the other side and 30. And then you got the EME, and you got a whole bunch of Yaggies. Yeah, and that, uh, does it show the receive antennas? We'll have, we'll have some uh, receive antennas as well. Uh, yeah, they're not uh, labeled 
as yeah. to whether yes. they're okay. transmit or receive. But yeah, it, I mean, it looks so, like it looks like the uh, W3AO uh, field day station set up. Yeah, that's um, wow. So you said you're going to take some some drone stuff. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's all set up and and ready to go. Okay, and this that's a shelter, and so that's the that's your proposed inside. Yeah, so you a, guys are all you're all bunking in there. Yeah, we'll have. Uh, I think there'll be two. I believe two uh, bunk shelters. The, our our sleeping quarters will not be uh, will not be heated. The other the the, the operating shelter operating. Uh -huh. and the uh, what they call the meat eat greet the mag will be will be heated. Uh -huh. But but we'll be sleeping in a uh, in unheated. Yeah, we'll be in out in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, out of the wind, you'll be in the yeah indoors oh, yeah. and and in uh, really good sleeping bags. I imagine what what little time yes. you'll have to sleep. Yeah, I you know I'll, I'll get a little bit of sleep. Uh, now keep in mind, I have I have a. A condition was sleep apnea, which requires me to to utilize a, a CPAP machine. So That'll I can be put that I can put that CPAP on and and hunker down in my sleeping bag, and I'm you know I'm good. I'll, I'll sleep like a like a log. Have you? Know. you uh, so I, so I have I have that too. And uh -huh. uh, have you experienced sleeping out in the cold? I'll uh, I'll give you a tip. You yeah. got to get a hose. Uh, um, they make a a blanket or like a jacket for the hose. I have you, that. <laughs> oh, good. Cause, cause otherwise you get rain and you still yes. make it rain. It's so cold. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cause it yes. Con condensates on the inside. Oh yes. Been there. And, done uh, that. <laughs> are they going to run, they're going to run power into there. Or are you bringing batteries for that separate? No, there will be power in there. Okay. Yeah. There will be okay. power. Yeah. So. Exciting. Yeah, it is really yeah. exciting. Yeah. So, um, so you said you're gonna bring a drone. Are, are you gonna have um, you gonna have a camera crew as well? Or are you guys gonna take turns shooting shooting other video or set up the GoPros so that you capture you know the the action as it were? Yeah, I, I have a, a, a GoPro. Uh, it's a Hero Five Black that I got for my birthday last year, and so I'll, I'll be I'll be using it. I've got several different mounts and and uh ways that i can wear it you know mm -hmm. to capture uh I, I got a um uh a gimbal uh for christmas that i can affix it to to get a little bit of stabilization with it a, a couple of the other guys i know will be shooting video uh, bob of course will, will shoot video k4uee um jerry i know he had a a, a gopro um, no deer is, is a, I, I think he's either a professional photographer or if not should be, uh, and you know, some of his, uh, some of his, uh, imagery is just spectacular. And so I don't know if, if, if he's going to be, uh, participating in, uh, you know, sharing some of his, his, uh, images or not, but, um, It'll be, uh, you know, I, I will take as much as I possibly can, mm -hmm. and uh, and try to document this. Uh, Bob had put out a an email to the group several months ago, wanting to know if anybody was bringing a, a, a drone, and uh, I, I think there was some reluctance because of the the harsh weather conditions. You know, you know these things, you know the 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 higher end ones are quite pricey, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I don't have a quite a high end one, but it it does take some really nice quality uh, video, and uh, you know I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that I don't trash it some way. <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you sent me sad. a you sent me a test, and it uh, it looked uh, the test looked pretty good. good. Yeah, I saw I saw that even the down sample stuff, which is all I could see because bandwidth or otherwise, it looked it looked really nice. I'm I'm have drone envy. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, I, I, I have been about... I've been contracted to edit this program. So, oh, cool. Yeah, looking forward awesome. to all that all that footage. Yeah. So you guys, if 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 you contract Gary, you're going to have to provide him with a lot of footage. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I I will give it to him. And and yeah. uh, you know, years ago, I used to take a lot of analog video, and I I messed around with some editing and and 
and, and so uh, I know you can't have too much, you know. And uh, so well, I'll, I'll, the, I'll these I'll these programs you. need to be kept down to about forty minutes or so because they're typically played as club meeting programs, mm -hmm. and sure. you, you're not going to keep people sitting in a club meeting for an hour and a half. That's why the ham radio now shows never show up at a club meeting. Right, because we go on for yeah. two hours. So, but we might be able Let's to, you know, squeeze in some extra footage. Yeah, as a as a bonus of some kind. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, definitely. So, um, what I'd like to do next is f figure out the best way for the hams out there in the audience uh, who are perhaps not some of the world's biggest DXers who are just, you know, ordinary hams, dipole, mm -hmm. 100 watts in a dipole, or maybe maybe they got a little beam, a little hex beam or something. Maybe they got a 500 watt amp. What's their best way to successfully make contact with you guys? Um, you For, know, well, first of all, shovel a lot of money at you. That's the first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's going to work either. Well, you're going to, yeah, you got to have a list, right? <laughs> Uh, That's you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. I mean, the, 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 uh, and, and I'm just, I'm meaning the, the, the first few days and, uh, you know, these, these pileups have a tendency to, to kind of ramp down, you know, as, as the, uh, the expedition continues on, um, you know, my, my best advice is, is not to be discouraged, um, you know, find find what your best opportunity is your best band you know whether it's uh 30 meters uh you know where you're competing with uh, uh 200 watt stations um and uh and then the, the the other other thing that i would suggest is study the those propagation charts uh on the uh on the website and and find out you know where you need to be you know, we, we plan on um, being on the bands um, uh, where the propagation is the best. And, and so, uh, you know, we will be active. But that's, that's so, a worldwide thing. You're not focused is, on North America. That, that's, that's correct. I mean, and so, you know, you will need to look and see which part of the world, you know, you live in, North America, Europe, what have you. And and make sure that you're on the right band at the optimum time, right. uh, predi predicted. Uh, and um, you know it's still not too late to to maybe tweak your station a little bit. You know if if uh, if you can you know uh, beef your antenna a little bit, or you know borrow an amplifier from from somebody, or um, you know make uh, make some kind of preparation that would give you just the added boost and the signal strength you know you you might you might do that but don't give up you know uh, as i'm looking it's, at the, as i'm looking at the band plan um uh -huh. a lot of the frequencies listed are outside the general class band and some of them are outside the american phone band but that's not a that's not a problem is it uh, no, no. Uh, I mean, you'd be and, listening you know, inside the bands where the generals can be. That's correct. That's correct. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we will be working split, uh, split frequency throughout. Um, and so uh, for the newcomer to DXing or the relative newcomer, you know, needs to understand how to operate split mode uh, and, uh, you know, Listen to the instructions of the operator. Um, you know when we're when we're calling for a, a specific part of the world, and you're not in that part of the world. You know, be patient and stand by. <laughs> you know, there's a method to our madness, uh, so to speak. So, uh, and then we, you know, we have our our pilots, what what are known as pilots, uh, of Valerie and V9L, and and. Uh, uh, several other uh, pilots located around the world will be um, fielding uh, comments and queries uh, from uh, DXers around the world. And so don't hesitate to contact your pilot in your, in your respective area. The, the, uh, the 
email addresses are there. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if we're missing a, a, a opportunity propagation to your location or what have you, you know, feed that information back, back to the pilot. And, you can't uh, ask they, a pilot to have the, the expedition listen for you. No, no, you, you, that, that's not what, what I was intending to, to Right, but I want to make sure people understand that. If, if, they're right. not, if they're not used to this idea of uh, the de-expeditions, um, then they could think, well, I'll just, you know, I contact the pilot and say, I'll be on this frequency at uh, 1400 to have them give me a call. That's I'll not going to happen. For, I'll be waiting for your call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's operators not, are standing by. <laughs> That that takes a really substantial contribution to the to the de expedition to to get something like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, you're you're basically supplying a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. And but so yeah. and and so how are you guys? Yeah, you, know, you guys have a um, uh, satellite phone or something to be talking to the pilots. Will you be, you know, directly connected to them on a on a daily basis? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We 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 all have uh, sat phone uh-huh. capabilities. And uh, and email capabilities, uh, you know, we, we will we will individually we'll be able to contact our families uh, um, and uh, and so forth. I'm one of the things that I'm taking, and and let me just mention this um, is a it's a Garmin inReach inReach. SE. Yeah. Uh-huh. In reach SE. It's a satellite tracker, mm-hmm. and this is a neat little neat little device. And with it, uh, folks will be able to to track us. This creates waypoints, and and will uh, them into a website. And the, that web address will be uh, released uh, in the next day or so. And people will be able to to follow us. Every half hour, we'll be sending a, a waypoint to this web, website, and you can see our progress as we get to Bouvet and then actually on to Bouvet. And you be able to look at that little uh, depiction that, uh, that Gary had there on the Google Earth map, and you'll see a, a blue dot when we're on the, on the island of Bouvet. Do you expect also, to, with, to be doing some maritime mobile on the, uh, on the, on the trip? Yeah, if you're not too seasick, is, there there will be uh, uh, one and possibly two stations. I believe they're going to try to put on uh, maritime mobile while we're, while we're uh, uh, traveling on on board the ship. So yeah, but uh, what what I was going to say with that in reach, uh, you know, we're capable of of sending emails and text messages with with that as well. So. You know, we will have communication back to the to uh, Val, uh, our chief pilot, and then uh, other other folks. Bob uh, W0BV, our our web guy, and uh, and and we'll be in touch with uh, our social media uh, as well. So, so what is your personal operating technique as the DX station in a pilot? Say you've got, I know you want to keep things down to, you know, 10 kilohertz wide, but realistically, this is going to be, th- you'll fill up a half a band, 20, kil- 20, 25, 30 kilohertz wide. Do you start at one end and listen up, up and down? Can, you, can I predict where you're going to be based on the last two contacts? Or do you fly up and down trying to pull something no. out? No, what I'll normally do is if, if I say I'm listening up 10 to 20, uh, and, and I, 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 I wouldn't want to go more than 20 kilohertz wide. Uh, I mean, I typically try not to. Let's put it that way. I, we'll see what happens here. But but what I'll do, I'll start at, at the bottom, uh, you know, where I've indicated, and I'll slowly start going up, and I'll go up to the to the 20 kilohertz limit that I've indicated in uh, in my uh, announcement. Sometimes I'll I'll even go a little bit above that, and that's a little little secret for the the <laughs> for our the audience low power, the the low power guys. Yeah, for our, for your audience. Um, Don't and, tell uh, anybody. You know, I might I may go up yeah. a little bit higher and listening for the weak stations. I I, I I do like to try to pull out what I think are the weak weak stations, 
and work them. And then I'll start, I'll start back and back down. I'll, I'll start back down or I'll play the root game, which, uh, I kind of, it's a little trick. I kind of picked up from Jerry WB nine Z where he'll just flip the dial and <laughs> where, where it stops. Nobody knows. <laughs> okay. So and it's going to be kind of start. You start, yeah, it's just kind of a random thing. You know, with the uh, the pan adapters and, uh, uh, you know, some of the other, uh, the, the spotting information that's out there, or you you know, people can find you pretty fast nowadays. And uh, so you can tell when the, when the frequency gets, uh, 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 the pileup, you know, lands on your, your last, your last QSO. And so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to move a little bit and naturally you're, you're going to hear the strong stations, you know, the stations that are just coming in like gangbusters, you know, uh, early on in the, in the, uh, operation, you know, you want to go ahead and get them in the log because, you know, you're going to get them in the log, uh, anyway, so better sooner than later. Um, so you this, know, you this is my, work. this is my opportunity to say, but every band in mode plus a safety contact just in case. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. No safety we, contacts. Leave no, some room no for the, safety. for the other guys. Yeah. Well, you know, we will be uploading our logs to, uh, to club log. I'm not sure the, the, uh, you know, it's not going to be real time. For, uh, I do know that, but you know, within 15 minutes or so, you know, the logs, my understanding is should be uploaded. Uh, and so you can check to see if, if you're there and certainly if you're, if you're not, uh, based on the, the timestamp on the, the club log, uh, uh, upload, uh, I would encourage and recommend people to get that safety contact because <laughs> you don't want to, you, you don't want to be wanna, able to do, you want to be able to do the happy dance. You want to do the happy dance. That's right. <laughs> but if you see yourself in the log, I mean, every band and mode is okay once. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Cause I mean, there, there's DXCCs based on that. Yeah. Yeah. There are people that like to, uh, you on 20 meters every day, you know, <laughs> 20 meter phone. And I, you know, I don't know, you know, what the pleasure is in that. You are knocking somebody out of a, a QSO yeah. and, uh, and that's just, you know, it's not, it's not good ham etiquette. I don't and, think not DX etiquette anyway. And we know the kind of stations that can do that are the, you know, the, the big, big antennas, big power. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, the, yeah, you literally are taking a contact away from somebody that's only got a hundred Watts in a hex beam. Sure. Dipole. Sure. But, you know, and so as Gary was saying before that those big stations, you know, I guess, I guess, you know, I'm not a DX or I'll, I'll be the first one to raise my hand and admit I, that's not me. I field I field day once a year, and I love doing that. And I wish I could do more, but I'm just not set up for it. You know, in in my mind, when we field day, and I hear that loud station, I, I want to just take him to take him out, so that I hope he goes somewhere else, so I can hear that quieter station, and then a quieter station, and the quieter station. Mm -hmm. um, sure, because uh, that that would be, you know, I guess that would be the way I would see it, and, and mm -hmm. hope that they would go away, or or I would move away. You know, he's, he's <clears> either you know either sit. Sitting, sitting on the the frequency area, you hop around and pounce on the other guy. I call it now. You guys are on the island, so you guys are going to be just sitting there and and hopping and pouncing. It isn't going to really do it from your end, but right. No, you, they they stay in one spot. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, and then you work up and down. You work up and down on the split. Right. You know, and other thing too, uh, guys is is you know we're we're using a logging software that shows us when we've worked that call sign before on a, in right. a given band or mode. So, you know, yeah, I'm not above calling somebody out, you know, <laughs> you know, after, after two or two times, you You're know, I give dupe. them the benefit You're of the dupe. doubt. <laughs> work, work you, go work somebody yeah. else now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you, we, we do run into that and, and you scratch your head and you wonder, you know, why, why are they doing this? They're bored. I, I'd, I I'd only assume that they're bored and doesn't yeah. have something else to do. I guess. So, um, how many how many bags have you packed so far? I have two. Uh, they're they're waterproof duffel bags that are four feet long by eighteen inches in diameter. That that are in the in the sea container. 
Uh-huh. I took I took them to Atlanta oh, okay. when uh, when I went down in um, in uh, September, uh-huh. and I'm in the process of packing a third duffel that I got from one of the local uh, Cabela's outlets, uh, which is actually a little bit larger than the ones that I packed in the sea container, and it, it'll be fairly full. Uh, and then I'll have another pack that I'll have with all my electronics, you know, yeah. camera stuff and, and then, uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's a little bit a like, lot of stuff. A little bit like so going to the all, space station. You've been given a size and weight limit, right? Uh, no. Oh, they <laughs> bring up, bring everything you want. Well, well I the, mean, what the ship can take it. The helicopters may not. Yeah. And, and, and what may end up happening is, you know, when, when before, go onto the island before we start, you know, loading the, the, the halos, you know, we'll, we'll maybe break down and only take what's absolutely necessary, at least, you know, for the first, you know, few loads. Um, I, I don't know. But yeah, so do you, no, do you, no, no. Go ahead, do you anticipate while you're there on the island, the helicopters can be going back and forth on a regular basis or, or once they get you all there and get you all dropped off, they're just going to hang out on the boat until, until either you call for help or or you're done with your couple of weeks on the island. No, they'll 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 uh, drop us off and then they'll go hang out. They'll just go hang out. Yeah, unless yeah. You know, unless we need something. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, they're not going to be. You know, again, each one of those trips is is money. <laughs> yeah. Hel- helicopters so, are built on an hour basis, hourly basis, yeah. and okay. So you get, you know, as much as you can afford in hours of the copter going back and forth, and then you're done. I suppose, you know, they could probably got plenty of fuel and all that stuff. And if, they, you know, emergency, they can do whatever they need to do. But uh, sure. But they'll, they'll bill you by the hour. Okay. Yeah. Bob That's knows. Not this. my pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Bob you, don't want, you don't want to know those things, right? <laughs> no, I don't want to know those. <laughs> Uh, just tell me where to show up when, and I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> so the stuff, so those two bags of stuff that you packed, that's like stuff for sleeping and clothes and, yeah. and just your personal gear. That's lots correct. Of war- lots of warm stuff. Yes. We got a lot, a lot of warm stuff. Uh, you know, my first, my first major purchase was a, a sleeping bag. Uh, and, uh, Glenn Johnson had recommended, had recommended a, a vendor for, for cold weather gear and uh and this sleeping bag it's i think eight and a half pounds it it took up a, a fourth of that four foot duffel bag <laughs> wow yeah it's like it's more like a bivy sack kind of thing it's a couple layers and and what have you yeah 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 it's uh it's a, a special material called lamellite uh-huh. that, that that this guy that uh, he markets uh these cold weather products and uh you know i'm i don't know if i can give him a plug or not but it's uh he's it's got okay some with, interest it's okay me. with me it's okay with me yeah wiggies.com wiggies w-i-g-g-y-s dot uh-huh. com and he's he's quite a character but glenn has used his stuff for years and uh and um i've i've uh nest sleeping bag and i was as we say, snug as a bug in a rug, and uh, I, I don't think I'm going to get cold. Let's put it that way. And uh, laundry on the island? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a laundromat. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, yeah. so I guess so. That's you know, that's a question. Like we, you know, like I I I do Boy Scouts, a lot of Boy Scout stuff. You know, we go to Boy Scout camp. You know, I I plan to pretty much have clothes for. For a week, but you're going a lot longer than a week. You're going for right. a couple, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, and it's cold. You don't sweat or smell quite as bad as when it's hot. But um, three weeks is a lot of clothes. Or wearing yeah. the same clothes all, for a long time. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Well, you well, know, I, I have uh, I have just the right amount of clothes, and there are, are some clothes <laughs> there are some articles of clothing that will not be coming back with me let's put it that way. Uh, i got it but you, you won't leave that you can't leave them on the island not on the, no not they on won't the be island. left on the island no, no. you'll 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 burn them you'll burn them when you get back to uh, yeah, so they will not be left no. um the the same question everybody asks the astronauts is uh, the bathroom 
stuff? Do you have to cart out all that stuff too, or can you bury your poop? Uh, no, it has to be carted out. Yeah. Yeah. It has to, it has to come off the island as well. Um, we're taking, who gets that duty? Yeah. <laughs> you had to go there, Gary. Well, cause I, I remember, know. I remember <laughs> sticking a, a little shot in the uh, Navassa video that, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to remember who it was that got that duty. I don't know what, what he did wrong, but. We, we, we'll have uh, at least one portage on, which will be our, our outhouse. And, uh, and I, I know Ralph had posted an interesting video uh, from, I think it was the Peter One uh, D expedition, where it was a blizzard. It was just a just snowing sideways, and somebody went out to use the outhouse. And it was occupied. He was wandering <laughs> around, <laughs> wandering around in the snow. <laughs> and finally, he throws his hands up. I guess he lost the urge or something. About him. <laughs> wasn't wasn't less desperate, or I got less desperate as he got less desperate. He got yeah. colder. Yeah, there's there, there's a lot of options for those now. I mean, they have the chemical toilets, but they have the incinerator ones too. I don't know if you know what 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 brand or type or whatever you got. I mean, you either you either you bag it or you cook it or or I don't know. Yeah, David, if you just spruce up your operating procedure, I think you'd be a candidate for one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got I got to I got to retire first. You got the outdoor stuff. Oh, I I totally got the outdoor stuff. Although, you know, I'm I'm okay with snow, but I don't know if I'm okay with snow for weeks on end. <laughs> right. I definitely got the hardy. I yeah, and I and I do have to work on it. And you got to have some space for somebody to work phone cuz I'm not a CW guy. But maybe someday. Yeah. Yeah, bring a laptop and a CW reader yeah. skimmer thing. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> I'll start advertising. Nice. I got my wife. My wife's got to. Uh, my wife's got to write her book first, and we got to be famous and wealthy, and then I can afford to do this. Which is the question I didn't even want to kind of ask you, but um, I can imagine if it's going to cost a million dollars. Um, you've been saving pennies for this for a while, haven't you? Uh yeah. I'm, I guess in essence, I'm. Kind of spending some of kids' inheritance here. <laughs> I, I, I retired. I retired three years ago, uh-huh. and I set aside some money. This was my ham radio mad money. Now most guys or a lot of guys they'll sink the money into building their stations and towers and what have you. And I kind of funneled mine into traveling and de expeditioning. And so, um, you know the. Uh, when when all said and done, I'll I'll have about twenty five k in this. So I mean that's give you some idea. Mm-hmm. With the total budget is about three quarters of a million, and the standard um, split is about half from the DX audience, and Correct. about half from you guys. Because this is you know a luxury vacation for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, well, but, but you guys do, uh, among the, the 20 operators are going to be there, you guys put up about half, and that's is it not cheap. It's an expensive vacation. It is. A, it is. But, but you know, like what, one of those like once-in-a-lifetime things. But you, know, you, you can, you can kind of put it in perspective and, and look. And it is. It's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime uh, opportunity. Unless, um, unless you're Bob Alfin, in which case it's every two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how does he do that? <laughs> it's <That's right. laughs> sell, selling the videos it's from selling the videos I th- i'm pretty sure that's what pays for his uh, yeah a oh, bliss is hard I'm, I'm more power to it <laughs> hey, but i am looking looking forward to to be on my first <laughs> d expedition with bob off and i mean the, the guy's a legend i mean let's face it yeah. Come on. And, and as is uh you know ralph i mean these guys these guys are uh you know hall of fame yep. d xers Bob is a legend, or as I refer to him, give me a break. I'm working as fast as I can. <laughs> yeah. You got that? Yeah. You got that ten, next 10 minutes edited yet, Gary? <laughs> no. Leave me alone. Yeah. Well, it, it, when we were down in Atlanta uh, a couple months ago, I, I learned that he's taskmaster, and I'll just kind of leave it at that. No, he, he's actually, he was very laid back. I worked at my schedule and had it done when I had it done, and he, he wanted it out by Christmas that year, so we made it. 
Is there anything else that uh, we need to tell people out there about uh, making that successful contact? Yeah, try, or, try, or, keep trying, try, try, yeah. try. And 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 how can how can our audience and other folks that are going to watch this video help help you guys make it a reality? Um. Well, I, I guess you know. First of all, uh, in terms of uh, making that contact, um, I, I want to reiterate you know, that the operator needs to be patient, and he needs to be persistent and he needs to just hang in there and, and or she needs need to hang in there and, and keep trying. Don't give up. You know, you can expect the, these pile ups to be so huge. Uh, and with that, you know, th- there's typically the, the DQRM that was some of that. And it's easy to get frustrated. It's easy to say to heck with this, you know, and I'm going to tell the audience, there will probably not be another Bouvet de expedition in many, many years. I mean, when, when we're talking the, you know, what's going into this, um, and maybe I'm wrong, and, uh, and and in which case, you know, you might have another shot. But you know, you got to look at this as, you know, this is my one shot to get a contact or to if you're just looking for a single band, so. So don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Hang in there. Um, we have on other de-expeditions asked for first time, uh, all-time new, uh, all-time new operator. Uh, you need it for an all-time new one. You know there'll be opportunities where we'll ask for that, and you does know we work? can tell if does it does it um, dim the din a it, little bit. A, a little bit, but you you got to you got to keep repeating it. <laughs> That's the sad thing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, th- there there might be uh, opportunities for that. So so don't give up, and uh, especially the the first several days, you know, it's going to be mayhem. So. Yeah. Uh, and what was this, what was the other part of the question? <laughs> how, to, the how how do uh, how do how does our audience uh, how does anybody watching well, can they this help help How do we help you? Um. Here's the plug part. Yeah, this is the plug part. Well, there's, there's a couple ways. You know, if you're on the air, uh, you know, what I would ask you just to listen to the operator and uh, observe uh, the instructions that the operator is giving, um, you know, for uh, supporting the de-expedition, there's uh, a way that you can go on the website. You can, can donate. You know, we certainly would appreciate uh, donations of any kind uh, to uh, – to uh, to support this de expedition, uh, when when you get your uh, QSL card, you know you'll have a, another opportunity to to donate through the OQRS. I, I guess that's how they'll do it to, with uh, um, uh, uh, N two O O is be doing our, our QSLs. He does a great job with those, and so there'll be an opportunity to to pony up a little bit more. So. You know, this is a costly venture, and uh, and we've had a tremendous amount of support from hams all over the world. I mean, it's just been phenomenal the support that we've received, and you know, we can't thank the those guys enough for for what they've done. Our our corporate sponsors, uh, uh, you know, Flex Radio, DX Engineering, and and some of the others. Um, you know, it's it's actually a a, a team. Um, it's a it's a team project that's beyond the the twenty operators that are going to be on that island. There's a whole bunch of people who put a lot in resources, money, what have you, and uh, you know we just thank everybody for for what they've done and and what we think that uh, you know is still yet to come. So um, yeah, that's my plug for <laughs> you know. Let's let's talk about some of your uh, um, equipment suppliers. It's it's all flex radios, right? Yes, yeah. That's and unusual then, for a de expedition. I don't think be a first. It will be a first. Uh, you know, we're we're going entirely with the the flex uh, systems, the, the Maestro, and uh, some of the uh, the flex radio uh, amplifiers that they've released to understand what we'll be we'll be using as well so yeah this is a, a good opportunity to uh 
to see how the SDR, the flex radios, will perform in a in a D expedition, and uh, you know, Craig CT, uh, Glenn W zero GJ, and some other folks that have been involved with uh, with the, the flex folks. You know, they have have diligently to to get things ready, and uh, you know, we uh, are are comfortable that uh, you know these rigs are going to perform as as they have anywhere else uh, you know so i'm looking forward to to playing with one i've only briefly uh, experienced uh, uh, the flex over at dayton this this past uh, this past year and then uh, we had a uh, a flex out on palmyra and uh, and uh, the guys played around with it a little bit. I didn't have an opportunity to do that, but I, I did see some of the stuff that it, it and I'm, I'm quite impressed. I'm hoping that uh, we get a couple stations set up on the boat and I'll get a little practice yeah, that's, time. Yeah. I wanted to throw in that. If you guys haven't, if you guys haven't used those radios, are you going to be, be up to speed, but I guess you'll have a couple weeks on the water if, uh, yeah. if they, if you guys get set up so you guys can all uh, know, know the hardware and, and what it can do and what it can't do. Gerald Youngblood's going, ah, please, ah, work, work. No failures. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're comfortable that they're going to perform very, very well. Very good, very good. Well, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hoping uh, you get a lot of good video and you make a, a ton of contacts. And then in a, in a month or two, maybe we can uh, bring you back on and maybe some of the other operators and uh, kind of recap what happened. And I know Gary will be furiously working on the video. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but it'd be great to have you back. And, okay, uh, love to and sure. see how it worked out. Great. Yeah, Anything one, one, of the, one, well, one of the things in terms of bringing people back is that they will be uh, on the Hamfest circuit doing forums. I'm sure slideshows yeah. and stuff before the video is available, and uh, probably sort of culminating at Dayton or you know plus or minus Dayton. Uh, I'm not sure how fast the video is going to be available. Um, I haven't talked to Bob about that. But I'm, as soon as I get my hands on all the material, I'm going to get started right away. And, you know, maybe, maybe even be out by Dayton. Who knows? Oh, well, that'd be great. So, yeah, we'll Super. see. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I am notoriously optimistic, falsely optimistic about how fast that yeah. stuff can turn around. Because it, it sounds like you guys are going to be tossing me a lot of stuff. All right. All right. I believe we're done. So I, I, right. I would say I would do this thing um, about sending money to us, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say uh, if you're yeah. thinking about making this contact at all, send your money to these guys. Yeah. <clears throat> not us this time. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. Um, so let's, uh, let's figure out who everybody is. On your left, Al Turley, W8HC, the... We, we had discussed what to call you, and I guess you do the Facebook page, so social media guru, but you'll be doing a lot. You'll be very busy. <laughs> I yeah. sent you some suggestions about what to do with the drone. I don't know if you'll have time to do any of that stuff, but I'm, I'm looking forward to, to good drone. I have drone envy. And uh, <laughs> let's see, who, who's that guy in the middle there? I'm uh, David Goldenberg, W0DHG. All right. I am Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. And uh, now... Okay, Hal. I don't expect Hal to have ever been to the end of a ham radio now show. Nope. It's we, all good. we close this program the same way every time. It's very special. You're okay. going to understand your part. It's a three part <clears throat> closing. You're going to understand your part by the time we get there. And and but you'll have to be sharp. You know, pay very careful attention. Here's here is how it starts. Over. And this is your turn. Out. The one thing that I would have, uh, would like to tell you is I got a piece so damn bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now here's the important thing. Share. Oh yeah. And I'm not talking about Sunny and I'm talking about to your wall.